Well, welcome everybody to episode two of the Idols Aside podcast. Uh, I'm Jace. I've got Mark and Matthew uh, with me again today. We and are just Oreo. so excited. Don't forget Oreo. Yeah, we can't forget our guest uh, mascot of Idols Aside, Oreo the Skunk. We are pumped to have him with us on episode two. Uh, but we've got an, an exciting episode for the listeners today. So just thank you for tuning in for episode two. <laughs> We're talking about why are we called Idols Aside. We're a hunting ministry. We do sports camps. We do hunting retreats. Why would we call it Idols Aside? So what we thought, man, what a better way and who better to talk about that than the founder of Idols Aside Ministries, Mark Wright. Why Idols Aside? I get that question a lot. How in the world did you get the name Idols Aside? Uh, actually, the, the better half of me, uh, Mrs. Wright, came up with that name she's the real mvp she is the yeah she is the serious like she's the goat bro yeah she is the mvp of the group um but yeah she came up with that name we were actually studying the word together um and studying the ten commandments a long time ago um this was about 17 years ago and we were exodus 23 what's that verse say guys thou shalt have what no other gods no other gods before me no other gods before me and at that season of my life uh just several years prior had wrapped up playing college football and then had an opportunity to, uh, to get looked at. Um, never did play in the NFL, uh, but got, uh, kind of got a somewhat of a tryout. You got to try out, didn't you? Yeah. I guess you could call it a tryout. I didn't last long. Um, but man, I was frustrated because after college, hold on, hold on, hold on. Did you just say what position you played? We're not going to talk about what position. I just wonder, I wonder if the people could even guess what position dude i know i eat a, i'm we're not going there i know i'm a little bit thicker than i was <laughs> when i played college football my wife has blessed me with uh, lots of biscuits and gravy and pancakes and all Praise types God. of yeah so yes i was a place kicker yeah and you're either the hero or the goat i think we've seen a lot of goats this year yeah a lot of goats i'm not going to say where we saw Everybody what teams i'm not going to say i feel bad for those guys yeah um but yeah you can be the hero or the goat as a place yeah. kicker but Let's go back to Exodus 23. That shall have no other gods before me. <laughs> yeah, um, back on topic. I thought my minute. That I thought after college, I really thought I was going to have the opportunity to, to do football a little bit longer. Uh-huh. Um, and that was my goal. That's what I hoped for, and it didn't happen. And I had uh, I just got married. Married the bride of my life this year. Married 22 years. Hey, that awesome. Hey, come on. So, got an awesome job. Um, uh, in corporate America with a Fortune 200 company, uh, climbed the ladder there, got another opportunity with another company, uh, was very blessed, uh, did great in the world's eyes. But man, I was struggling. Um, I was struggling because I still had some of that identity of college football player and wanting to do more with it. Sure. And I was frustrated and like, God, why, why couldn't I play football more? You know, I had, I was seeing some buddies of mine that were playing uh, Major League Baseball and in the NFL, and they weren't using their platforms. Uh, uh, you know, giving God all the glory and using it best for Christ. And I was like, God, why are you allowing them to play the game? And I'm sitting here having to do this sales and marketing job, That's tough. you know, and it was, it was tough. And so we were studying the word and Becky had looked at me. She said, Mark, you don't have to put on a suit and tie, you know, and be behind a pulpit to do ministry. You, you can still use everything that God's put in your life to go about building his kingdom. And I'm like, yeah, not, can't play football anymore you know those days are over and she's like no there's more to it and so the more we were studying and and I was just getting closer to God you know uh you know just in my time in the word and with my wife and then in the study group that we were in I really just felt the Lord saying Mark you know and, and I really had I had some visions some dreams or he was showing me that I was working with fatherless and it looked like a camp and it was hunting and and it was football and baseball and man I couldn't really put it all together at that time uh, but I really just, the, in time, the Lord did show me. He said, hey, Mark, I want you to go about my business. Use everything from uh, being from a home where there was divorce and, and brokenness and and uh, and what I used in your life in high school and college football and the corporate world and just put it all together to go about his business. And so we, I took a step of faith um, way back. <laughs> it's been almost 16 years now. And um, and Becky and I took a step of faith and we started Idols Aside. And mm. But it, it came from that verse, Exodus 23 and and uh you know the world idolizes right the world the world idolizes these professional athletes they uh they idolize a lot of things you know other than christ and 
And like I said, I was frustrated with that. And so I was like, you know, maybe, maybe we could have a ministry. And Becky's like, call it Idols of Sun, you know? And so that's kind of how it started. Um, and uh, with a name. Was that um, when you started having these dreams and visions and God started pull, pulling on your heart to walk away from these, was this a, a quick transition? Was it like a year? Was it six months? I know for me personally, when it took me about a year when God started telling me, hey, you need to go full time with idols aside. I wrestled with God for about a year until I submitted. Was it the same thing for you? Was it a short transition? You just, you did it or? You know, about that? I, my wife and I always, when, when it, in life when it comes to making big decisions you know and there's a lot of big decisions in life right you know we ask god and the holy spirit to give us evidence and uh, it's interesting you asked that because i felt like god was just putting all these little thumbprints in my life over a four five six month period mm -hmm. uh, the one that really uh, grabbed a hold of us is my i took my wife and we stayed at this place called the Vinoy Resort down in St. Pete, and we used to love going to Tampa Bay Rays baseball games. Mm. And I remember coming back that night from a game, and we went to the hotel and uh, hopped on the elevator, and all of a sudden this guy walks in on the elevator with, with us, and it, he was from the other team, not from the Rays, and he was the star of that team. And uh, so I just felt like the Lord was telling me, hey, ask, ask this guy if he knows who I am. And so I looked at this baseball player and I said, hey, man, do you know, do you know who Jesus is? <laughs> and uh, he looked at me and he's like, do what? He, and I said, man, do you love Jesus? And he's like, bro, he said, I, I've never had anybody ask me that before. And so we got off the elevator and he asked me to get off the elevator. And we talked more. We ended up talking for about 30 minutes. Wow. And my wife is like, that's just not normal, Mark. <laughs> you know, and, um, and I, it was cool. I just, I love this. I, I'm more... I'm more comfortable with evangelism than I am with discipleship. Mm -hmm. You know, my wife is the discipler. I do disciple because I'm called to do that, but I'm okay just to share the gospel with somebody sitting on the airplane or, or with a ball player. But just God was doing a lot of little things like that and um, and uh, just opening some doors and just saying, hey, you know, be bold for who I am and let, let me use what I put in your life to go about my business. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, Matthew, uh, I'd like to just ask you, you know, you've you've worked here a little bit longer than I have. What has just the the name idols aside, how has that internalized for you? What does that mean to you? How do you apply that to your life and in these boys that we meet with? Yeah, so first off, it's amazing what these boys teach me. I come here and I'm thinking, you know, I'm going to get to teach these boys some stuff about God, the Bible, and all these things, and they've taught me so much mm -hmm. uh, just from their stories. The idols aside portion it's amazing to me who the, who kids gravitate towards. And I think back to when I was a kid and I was a teenager and I was first getting on social media, all this stuff. You see these images of people and you're like, I want that or I want that. Mm -hmm. And it came to the point, I wasn't idolizing a person, but I was idolizing a lifestyle. And what I've come to see is that everyone idolizes some kind of lifestyle which they want. They're mm -hmm. desiring something. So to be able to show them that God wants your life to prosper. He wants good things for your life. Right. So And so do we, but God wants to give us those, and he wants to lead us to get to there. So to be able to talk to these kids about allowing God to lead them through life and show them what they're wanting, show them what he has for them, what's going to fulfill them, has really to see them put that into action, even just little things as if it's to put down the phone for 15 minutes to open up the Bible, to put down the phone for 15 minutes just to talk with their mom or their grandma mm -hmm. even. Yeah. to put things aside that they want to do and that they desire to invest and just learn a little bit more about the ones who love and take care of them. Even little things like that, it's showing me the little things can take over God in your life as well. So to set even those things aside. Right. Man, that's real good. Good, guys. Um, you know, I, I love one of my favorite Bible verses in as I've been a pastor the last several years and I've been over teams and over different volunteers, one Bible verse that I've always tried to instill in, in leaders and people that are giving their time to serve the Lord to help us stop from, man, it's really easy, especially if you're a lead pastor or you're the, the president of an organization. It's very easy for people to idolize you, to put you on this platform, to think that you're high and mighty or you never mess up. And that's where we see a lot of people walk away from the faith is because they idolize this person. And then when they mess up, it's like, man, you see, all this was a fake. Mm -hmm. 
But one thing that I've always tried to teach people is Luke 17, 10. And Jesus himself said, when you've done all that I've commanded you to do, he said, you should, this should be your response, that I'm just an unworthy servant doing my duty. And so that's, that's us. We're unworthy servants. We're doing our duty. And if we can teach these young men to not idolize these sports or women or money or any of these things that they are ach- wanting to achieve in life, if they can keep God the focus in their life, keep Jesus number one, that, that he's the bullseye, everything else centers around him. If we can do that and instill that in, in them, that's going to set them up for success in their life. And we're going to see these generational curses be broken where, you know, we've seen, we, we meet with kids and we, you know, do some discovery with them. And it's the first time that we're, we're meeting with them. And we might say, Hey, you know, is your dad active in your life at all? Cause you know, sometimes they, they see their dad some, and it's, um, it always amazes me when a kid will say, you know what? I, I have a good dad. I said, Oh, that's awesome. Like how, how often do you see them? like two or three times a year. And I'm like, you think that that's a, that's a great example of a dad and just trying to retrain them to understand that, you know, this, this example that they've seen, there's something better and that's their heavenly father. And so showing them and pointing, uh, pointing all these young kids that we meet with to their heavenly father. And we do that through creation. Uh, you know, Mark, I, I'd love for you to elaborate on, Hebrews eleven three and Romans one twenty, where we see God in His creation. What's yeah. your thoughts on those two verses? Yeah, I'll, I'll read Romans one twenty in a minute. But before before I dive into that, people all the time say, "Well, why the outdoors? Like, why do you have to take these fatherless kids to hunting lodges? You know, in mm-hmm. Florida and Kentucky, why?" And uh, and we're, I'm going to go into that. And uh, I think a lot of people think, "Man, we, you know, it, we're not taking out Oreos, <laughs> you know." But uh, I think a lot of people think, "Oh, you just you guys want to kill these big white tail bucks, or you want to y'all want to catch those nine ten pound bass out of the ponds, or you know y'all are trying to kill that that triple bearded uh, turkey. E- turkey, you know, that's uh, dragging his beard underneath his spurs, you know." And those things are awesome, right? I mean, if if we do do have a harvest, it's icing on the cake you know, and, and the meat off that deer to get it processed for those kids and their families. It's a huge blessing. Huge. And, and a lot of your hunting shows and a lot of your hunting gear, you know, it's, it's because people love hunting, but unfortunately a lot of people do idolize hunting, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we love it here, but we're we're not going to idolize it. We want to put our focus on Christ, but people ask us all the time, why the outdoors? I'm going to tell you why. Come on. And I love locker rooms. I love football fields and baseball fields, and we still do some sports camps, but the reason we do things out here as a kid that's grown up on this earth and has not had their earthly father in their life to get them out here in the magnificence and the beauty of everything that God made and created Mm -hmm. and can get them to understand there is a creator God that's designed them for even a greater purpose uh, in their life greater than the outdoors and man when you can get these kids out here in a hunting stand you know, sitting around a campfire and you look up at the sky <laughs> and you point to him, the stars, the sun, the moon, you look at the trees, you look at those deer, the turkeys, you know, you, all those things God created. And I think sometimes in Christianity, we, we go straight to the new Testament and we go straight to the cross mm-hmm. and don't get me wrong. That is the biggest trophy, the greatest gift of salvation that's ever been given to us. That is the, the ultimate. But I think sometimes we need to go to the beginning and Genesis and talk about creation and creator God. And because with these kids, we can't just go to them straight to the name of Jesus and straight to the cross. Like, I want name? to, I want to, because I know that what the cross has done uh-huh. for me and, and, and it's changed my, my life, not just here on this earth, but eternally it's changed my life. I want, I want them to have that immediately, but you have to build trust and you have to build relationships with these kids. And, and when I see that kid understand at first, there is a God and the, then the light bulb can turn on. There's just a creator. God he made them with a purpose greater than the outdoors and they can understand that. And as we get to know that kid and we go get to visit these kids in schools mm-hmm. and we get these kids out here on multiple retreats here and we're building trust and building a relationship with them. And because a lot of these kids, they struggle with PTSD. You know, they struggle with depression. They, they haven't had a dad in their life. They're, they're dependent upon a mom, a grandma or teachers in a school. You know, and when we can introduce them to Creator God, and that they get, they can understand that, 
man, as we build that relationship, we can introduce them to Jesus, mm. introduce them to the cross. But that's the main reason why we come to, come to the lodges. That's the main reason why we're in the woods is to teach these kids how big God is. And, and it's amazing when you get out there. These kids are like, man, I, Mr. Mark, I've never seen nobody make a sky before. Or, Mr. Mark, did you plant all these trees out here at the ranch? Nope. No, buddy. Those were here when we, when we when God blessed us with this place. Well, how, how those deer get out here? Did y'all bring these deer? No, son. God placed those deer out here too. And it just amazes these kids that, you know, that there's a creator. You know, and, and if you think about it, common sense, to, to create something, you have to have what? You, you got to have a creator, right? You have a creator. And some of y'all may be listening to this podcast or, or watching this episode and, and – and uh, online and, and you be, may be like man this what's, what you're doing with fatherless kids is great but man i don't believe in god you know i don't believe in god i don't believe in all this stuff and so for those that man are just struggling you know I, i've had seasons in my life when i was younger where i had doubts you know when i when i was in high school and early college and and and, and god and jesus is not just church you know he he uh he wants to be your everything. That's good. Like he, he wants to be your ultimate father. But I want to share a verse with you for those that are out there and say, man, I'm just, I don't believe in nothing. Or, man, I don't know about this Jesus thing. Or I don't want to be part of this Western culture movement. I'm going to share how a verse. I know him if I've never seen him. Yeah. How do I know if I've never seen him? And I want to share with you this verse. And this verse has had a lot of impact in my life being out in God's creation. But just being with these kids, man, that don't, that don't trust God or know him, you know, at first. And so I want to read this verse. It's Romans 1.20. And it says, for since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Excuse. So basically to make, put it in real simple terms, guys, we walk out the front door of this lodge, we look at all those things I just talked about outside, we have no excuse for not believing in God, just that's being right. in his creation. It's enough evidence. There's enough evidence. Yeah. That's even that, even, even somebody that's out in the Amazon, that is a part of a tribe that has never, mm -hmm. you know, read a Bible, heard the word of God. They still can see the evidence of God through his creation that they're surrounded with. It's crazy. It blows my mind. I that's awesome. It. I love it. You know, it, it, just to throw this out there and uh, you folks listening, you know, you think about <laughs> how much time it takes to plan a vacation, right? You know, and the places you go, the things that you do, you know, and, and, and my wife were, and I were talking about this last week. You know, we looked at all the vacations, you know, I've, I've got a kid graduating high school this year. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of oh, heartbroken. Man. I don't oh, want Gracie to leave. She's yeah. going to Texas, but Texas is a good state. Yeah. But we were sitting there looking back and thinking about all the places we've taken our kids and our vacations and our time. And it's crazy, man. If you look back at the places we've gone, about 99% of them, we're in God's creation. The places we love to be the most, we're in the mountains or on a river or at the beach or at a hunting lodge, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you know, if it wasn't those things or our other vacation time was, was surrounded around people, you know, who God created, who got yeah. and God created people. Yeah. And so, man, it's just cool to look like the things that we love most in this life is, is people and what he's made. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and because he's, he's in the, I mean, man, it, it's part of him, you know, we're created in his image. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we sure are. Yeah. You, Matthew, you look like you got something you want to say. You got something for us? Well, so my version is a little different, but uh, I'm going to read Romans 120 again. Uh, this is the Christian Standard Bible version. For his invisible attributes, that is his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly seen since the creation of the world, being understood through what he has made. As a result, people are without excuse. I mentioned in a previous episode and whatnot but like I have learned so much from just being able to serve God through being a part of idols aside and my walk with him has grown so much and I didn't have an appreciation for creation until getting out in creation mm -hmm. I didn't understand just how peaceful it is how much of a recharge it can be how much of just to get out in creation you got no cell phone service or any of that and you're sitting there with a 12 year old boy and another volunteer and you just talk about life talk about stories in your life being able to hear stories from volunteers of how jesus changed them and then hearing these kids and just watching walls break down well they'll just open up about their own stories as well it's amazing what god's creation can do for just causing peace to come over you 
and just allow things to just flow out and you can you will just talk it's like a therapy session yeah we could have a whole episode on cell phones yeah we could <laughs> we probably will at some point <laughs> we yeah, probably, probably. yeah it, it, yeah just to let you folks know when these kids come out here they have to put all their when they bring their electronic devices they've got to put them on the wooden bowl in the kitchen you know they're not going to be on their phones the whole weekend they're here when they're on these retreats and it's crazy i, I was all looking at some numbers the other day you know if you most kids today are spending nine to ten hours a day on screen time that's a full-time job yeah. and if, if you live to be an 80 year old person that's like 10 to 15 years of your life mm. isn't that crazy yeah that's crazy i had a kid the other day uh, out of school i'm not going to mention the kid's name not going to mention the school he had 14 he was averaging 14 hours a day wow that's crazy yep uh, yeah. I'll, get, I'll get off the cell phone topic because no, that'll no, we'll, that's be, we'll, good. Be, we'll I mean, be discussing it for an hour. <laughs> you know, the Asians got to do math. But if you live to be 75 years old and you spend eight hours a day on average, uh, every single day, seven days a week, eight hours on your phone, that's a third of your life. That's 25 years yeah. that you've spent looking at a little device like this that's just melting your brain when you could be out there in God's creation experiencing uh, him and what he has placed around you naturally. Yeah. And I think about even you add that on, but then you've got eight hours a night you sleep on average and that's another 25 years of your life. So you, out of 75 years of your life, 50 years of it now has just been sleeping, like sleeping on and on your phone. And we need to sleep less then, don't we? <laughs> well, <laughs> you could do that. <laughs> you could. Um, is there any other, anything else you got on just why idols aside, why why that name, uh, your maybe vision for where idols aside is going to be going and how God's going to use that that name to uh, glorify Him? Yeah, our mission is bringing you know the gospel um, to the fatherless. Mm -hmm. You know that is that is our heartbeat. We're doing that in Western Kentucky, Central Florida. Our goal, like I said on the last podcast, is to see armies of, of, of people fighting for the fatherless. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have some opportunities potentially in other places to have some hunting lodges, but you know what? W we don't have to have offices and hunting lodges all over the mm -hmm. country. You know, I, I believe if, if the believers in the local body church stepped up, man, I, I would love to have messages coming through, through our social media, through our email from pastors, just from people, normal people saying, you know what? I'm going to reach one kid. Yeah. And, and to say that look and to, and to hear that pastor of that church say hey fatherless you know that i know what sense. i know what scripture says about fatherless this going to be we're going to fight for them we're going to love them we're going to love those moms and grandmothers we're going to go after those ones that are not in our church we're going to love those people we're going to market to those people mm -hmm. we're going to do things for those people and allow that to become part of the culture of our church absolutely man that'd be a win you know we, if honestly guys and and pastors please forgive me out there for, for hearing this but because of the disobedience of the local body church, we have nonprofits today. Mm. And I would love to not have to have a nonprofit. <laughs> you know, I would love just to see the church, you know, in this country take off, you know, and, and, and there are a lot of lanes, you know, but I do believe the broken home leads to a lot of other recovery programs. Right. You know, it leads to, you know, the broken home, I think, can lead to alcoholism, to drug addiction. You know, we can sit here and go down the list, you know. Um, but man, I just, that's our hardest for the fatherless. You know, this on our hat, we've got the I am logo. It's just, a, it's a brand. It's a label. You know, I, I want people to know us as disciples of Christ. For sure. You know, fighting for those who can't fight for themselves, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what we're, our heart is. And, and, and ultimately anything that we do, you know, we're, we're in a country that has become a fatherless nation. A lot of people don't have God in their life. And I want to read a scripture to y'all. Um, and it, it's out of uh, Romans chapter 10. Um, verses 13 and it's a real simple verse it says for wh whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved mm -hmm. you know and there's a lot of you today cry out to God you don't you don't have to get your life perfect and have to have everything in order and and look a certain way to be on God's team that's right you know he he he, he wants to take you exactly how you are the baggage the sin the struggle anything you've dealt with in your life he wants to take you as you are and uh, man it's a beautiful feeling it's a beautiful sight to have that comfort and joy when you just take that foot forward and say god i want to be on your team yep. god i'm broken in my sin god i know you're not just creator of, of of the outdoors and creator of all things and creator of me but god you also sent your son to die for me yep. and uh, and if you believe in him and you call upon his name and you ask forgiveness for your sin you're not going to be perfect when you say yes to god and be yeah. on his team we're still going to make mistakes but the goal 
of becoming, uh, we call it a Christian in this country. I like to use the word disciple instead. Mm -hmm. um, but when you put God in your life and you say yes to him, you want to put God in all aspects of your life. You know, and I think that's a struggle today. A lot of people don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be perfect in all those areas, but you want to put God in all things, in everything, in your job, in your family, uh, in your extracurricular activities, right. in your social life. Put God in all of it. That's what he wants. You know, and doing that, man, it's it's awesome. And, yeah. uh, man, I, I just love it. Jesus is enough, guys. He sure is. I I really believe that believers, especially in our country, really are battling with other pulls from the world, whether it's success in their job, their success for their kids to, you know, be successful in their sport or in their grades so they can get a, a, a scholarship one day and hopefully, you know, get to have a good job and meet a meet a great spouse so they can have what world de mm -hmm. defines yeah. a success. And I really think because of that, we have a misalignment of priorities and therefore when we hear a call to hey you need to go serve fatherless now it's become an inconvenience to us because it is supposed to overshadow our other priorities and so when we do this misalignment now the ministry that god has called us to to go into the world and make disciples now it becomes a burden and that's a bad mm -hmm. place for believers to put themselves in um i'm curious if you could give, you've already challenged people that are listening today, you know, if they're not a believer, you need to go all in. You need to do that, of course. To, the Bible says that today is the day of salvation. And so if you haven't, you need to make that surrender. You need to ask the Lord to just forgive you of your sins and go all in and ask him to just consume everything. Make everything about the Lord. But for maybe that person that is a believer, Mark, what is, what's the one call to action that we could ask them to do? The one step that they could take today to, you know, maybe not, maybe not support idols aside, but support the work of serving a fatherless. What's that, what's that one step look like? I'm going to be honest. This is coming from a little bit different approach, but my call for the believer is if you're on God's team, what role are you playing? Hmm. What do you mean by that? You know, I, I played football. I'm on a team with you guys. And if I don't take my role seriously, you know, if I, if I don't do what I'm supposed to do, it can affect you guys, right? It can affect kids. Yeah. It, when I played football, if I didn't take my role seriously, and some of those guys that were on a line, if they didn't take their role seriously, guess what? It affected everybody. Everybody. You know, and, and that's the same with Christianity. You know, every day God puts people in our circles of life to love, to build relationships with, and to share who he is with. And I don't think we take our role seriously. You know, and, um, you know, taking that role seriously and being on God's team doesn't just affect your life, but it affects everybody in your circle, mm -hmm. but it affects multiple generations after. And, uh, and I don't want God to look at Mark Wright one day and say, why didn't you talk to this person? Mm. You know, why didn't you share this with this person? You know, and so my advice for everybody is what, what role are you playing on God's team? Are you taking that role seriously or are you just being a, just a uh, Western culture, hey, I go to church, emotions. going through the motions Christian. And guess what? Uh, and I'm not saying – I don't have it all together. I'm saying this because I have learned. All of us guys sitting on this couch right here talking, we, we are we are constantly learning every day. And the word disciple means be a learner. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have it figured out. I'm just constantly learning. But I, but I try to take my role on God's team seriously. He's called me in the lane for fatherless. And I believe that's a lane for everybody because everybody listening to this knows a kid without a dad, knows a single mom or a broken grandma. I'm just asking you to reach one. Yep. You know, I think Jesus would ask you to reach one, you know, and I know there's a lot of other needs and a lot of other things out there, um, but take your role seriously. You know, if, if you proclaim the name of Jesus and you're on his team, you know, fulfill, be your best for God. And you know what? Everybody's best is different. That's right. Everybody has different talents and gifts. And, and some of you have a real healthy temple. If you've got a healthy temple and you've got hands and feet and eyes and you can hear and you can see, use your temple to the fullest of God because there's a lot of believers out there that don't have a healthy temple. So good. You know, and, they're, and if God has blessed you with treasure, treasure is a gift. F financially support your church. Financially support nonprofits and ministries that are doing the things of Jesus Christ. You know, uh, time. Guys, you can't save time. I wish I could bottle it up in a mason jar, hmm. but I can't. You know, and you don't, you may not get tomorrow. I mean, we've had kids, 
I mean, I, if I get into it, I'll start crying on this thing. And I can't, guys can't do that in camo. <laughs> um, but man, we've had kids come on retreats that I've gotten to build relationships with at this lodge in the schools. And we've had some kids that God's taken home yeah. from, from illness, from cancer, from car accidents, um, from, you know, we had a kid in Florida one time go to a basketball camp and he surrendered his life to Christ that day, man. He, he came forward and man, that next day God took him home, mm. you know? And, um, man, I just, you know, you, I mean, I, I love hunting. I love outdoors. I love, you know, the lane of follow us, but man, I love Jesus. Yeah. And man, I want, I want the people that are listening to this to understand how he can change your life. And you, you ain't gotta be perfect. You know, I'm a dumb redneck <laughs> <laughs> that loves Jesus. You know, I've learned a lot of things in life and I'm still learning. Um, but man, Jesus is enough, you know, and, sure and just take that step of faith, man. Take that step, man. I think it's harder to not believe than to believe. I think it's, yeah, it takes more faith not to believe than to believe. Yep. Sure does. I would say, um, talks about, Mark was talking about being in a lane. What's your role on God's team? If you don't know what that is, ask him. Spend some time in prayer. Spend some time in the Bible and just ask him what talents and gifts he's given you and what you can use for the kingdom of God, how you can build on the foundation of Christ and what he's done in your life, your story, and how you can help reach other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. For me, I would say um, if you don't, maybe initially somebody doesn't come to your head. Maybe it's not a kid. Maybe it's not an adult. And if you don't know, if you're struggling to figure out who could I serve, a couple of things. One, pray ask the lord hey who who can you put on my mind lord give me a name give me somebody make me think of somebody the lord will honor that and he'll he's going to put those names in those people and then two you need to have the awareness uh, i love what pastor boogie has probably told all three of us is that the most important person in the world is the person that's right in front of you and so how do you get the gospel that's inside of you into that person that's that's the question if you're a parent your kids are right in front of you every single day. How are you getting the gospel into them? If you're single and you have a job, how are you getting the gospel into those that you are working with? That kid, that family that's, that is considered an outcast that lives down the road from you. Have you, have you invited them to church with you? Have you invited them over for dinner? Are you investing in their lives? We have to become aware of the opportunities that God is putting in front of us. So that, that would be my challenge for all of you today is see who is around you. Ask the Lord to put people in front of you. If you ask him to give you opportunities to serve other people, to make his name known, he, that's in his will. That's in his will. He wants to see that. And so do all of these things that we three have talked about today and watch how God will use you in a powerfully way. So yeah, as we wrap things up, uh, share this with your friends, share this with people in your communities. Um, we're looking forward to the hunting episodes and more podcasts with you ahead. And just last thing, this right here is alive. It's yes. God's word. It's alive and active. And it's our roadmap and our guide for life. And if we have people out there out there that are not readers or that are not, you know, you can download an app on your phone. Yep. Uh, you can have the Bible read to you in your vehicle. And so I just challenge you to get at least, give God five minutes every day. Mm -hmm. If you have time, give him a lot more. But give God time, get, get in his word every day. It'll change your life. Yep, yep. We'll see you guys. Thank Thanks you. for tuning in.